Caitlin Clark has had a very successful time in the WNBA so far, getting her team to a playoff berth and to the sixth seed only one year into her tenure. But some people are not as fond of her, and in particular, her opponents. Although for the most part, players, fans, and coaches try to build her up, there is still a pretty large amount of people that are praying for her downfall. And there are even a few people who have gone so far to assault the young star. Caitlin Clark has personally had 17% of all flagrant fouls in the WNBA this season committed against her, which gives us not only speculation, but also facts that some people just have it out for the young star. Uh, Caitlin Clark has personally received 17% of the flagrant fouls. But without further ado, let's jump right into the assaults on Caitlin Clark and get into just how ridiculous they have gotten. To start us off, we're going to be looking at one of her most recent games, when she played up against the Dallas Wings, led by WNBA All-Star Game MVP Enrique Ongumbawale. But this game, the spotlight was on a different Wings player, Kalani Brown. Kalani Brown was a star for the Lady Bears at Baylor, and was selected in the first round back in 2019. But what she did to Clark will not look good on her career resume going forward. There was a moment where Kalani, who was the center, could have sent back the smaller guard shot into the stands, but it seemed like there was a clear motive and that the motive was not to go for the ball. Instead, she ended up swinging at the ball, but also swinging at her face, hitting her and getting a flagrant foul called on her, which proved to be crucial as the Fever defeated them by just one point. Now, let's turn to a bigger name who had a little run-in with the rookie star, Skylar Diggins-Smith. In this moment that was luckily caught by a fan, Diggins-Smith was acting quite petty. As Caitlin walked over to her bench during a routine timeout, what Diggins-Smith did was shocking. She, out of nowhere, sped up in order to run into Clark, and it got some of the fans worked up about it because it was very clearly unnecessary. But Caitlin Clark was able to get her revenge in the end, and she was able to lead the Fever to a 92-75 win while scoring 23 points and dishing out 9 assists to punish the Seattle Storm. But before we go any further, this video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand that's changing the game when it comes to men's grooming. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to something next level. The latest innovation from the grooming masters at Manscaped, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. They've taken precision and performance to new heights with this tool. And let me tell you, this is a must have for your grooming routine. Let's take a look. First up, let's talk about the next gen dual skin safe blades. Manscaped has upped their game with an upgraded trimmer blade that cuts through hair effortlessly, but is still gentle on your skin. No more endless passes. This gets it right on the first go. And then we've got the foil blade. This blade leaves your skin silky smooth, tackling those hard to reach fine hairs for a polished finish. It's like getting the best of both worlds, two trimmers in one. Manscaped also added a bigger LED light for those tricky spots designed to work seamlessly with different skin tones. It still has the features you love, a rechargeable battery, RPM technology, and yes, it's waterproof for easy shower use. So if you're ready to elevate your grooming game, Head over to manscaped.com and grab the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra today. And don't forget, when you use my promo code PLAYERSUNLIMITED, you get 20% off plus free international shipping. Trust me, your balls will thank you. But now, let's get back to these controversial moments. Now, let's move on to this moment during an intense rivalry game between the Indiana Fever and the Chicago Sky. These two teams have had a few run-ins, as Caitlin Clark goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with her college rival, Angel Reese. But most recently, Clark was assaulted after just going down in a routine transition play. In this moment, it appeared as if Clark would have a little bit of resistance to the basket in transition after the Fever secured the steal. But then, out of nowhere, Skyguard Diamond to Shields came in to hit Caitlin Clark, rock her to the ground, and take the transition momentum away from Indiana. Although it was clearly a hard foul, hard enough to guarantee a flagrant foul, the Shields was still shrugging her head, and fans came after her, saying that the Skyguard could have seriously hurt her and that she should be suspended for the assault and the hurt that she put on Clark. However, Clark was able to play a spectacular game and answer back with 31 points, 12 assists, and 4 rebounds en route to a dominant 100-81 victory. After the game, there was another controversial figure who entered the scene, Cheryl Swoops, who has been outspoken about her hate and about her doubts about Caitlin Clark. She said, Head up, kid. Hate will not win. You are covered and ain't nothing these evil people can do about that. All love for you. Swoops' hate for Clark has caused many fans to invalidate any opinions that she's had about the sport, especially when she's blatantly gave wrong facts, like saying that Clark played more than four years in college. If Kelsey Plum set that record in four years, mm -hmm. well, Caitlin should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, and then there's another year, you know what I mean? So she's already had 
an extra year to break that record. So when she came outspoken about it, fans gave some blowback, saying things like this fan. So you're good with very blatant cheap shots against players just because you don't like them? In the end, Clark has played it cool, but that does not mean players will stop coming after her. Very recently, when the Indiana Fever played up against the Las Vegas Aces and Asia Wilson, there was a moment when Clark took a pretty hard shot. Caitlin Clark was able to get a shot up, but it missed. And as Las Vegas Aces all-star Jackie Young attempted to box her out, she seemed to miss and hit Clark square in the face with her elbow. Clark lay on the ground in clear pain. And after the game, at the post-game press conference, it finally seemed as if she had enough of it. She talked about how physical her opponents had been, saying, They're going to be physical. They're going to do it again. Seems like she has lost hope in her opponents. But she also seemed to call out the referees and talk about how they need to step it up as well, saying, The offensive fouls are definitely surprising at times. Um, you know, I feel like I do get held and get quite a bit of contact throughout the games. And then you get hit with some of those when you take some contact and give contact back. Um, it is what it is. She has a point, but it seems like it may be too late. Now, let us go back to the fifth game of the year, where Clark was taken down when playing against the Seattle Storm. With the clock winding down in the first half, the Fever needed a bucket, and with about eight seconds left, Clark was able to make her way around Agumake for the Storm to get herself in a pretty good position. But there was one more defender that she needed to defeat, Ezi Magbagor, the Storm's big. As she put the shot up, it appeared as if she was blocked because there was no call, but a replay review showed otherwise. It appeared as if Clark was indeed hit, and in the head, by Magbagor, who did a poor job of contesting the shot. And this moment, very early on in the season, became a time when fans began to call on the refs to call fouls on moments like these, because Clark could be in danger of getting hurt if not. Many people forgot about this moment until very recently. Whenever the Storm put out a post to vouch for Magbagor to win the Defensive Player of the Year and the picture that they used came exactly from the play where Clark was hit in the face and it did not resonate with fans as expected. Even Clark Report, a pretty well-known Twitter account, responded saying, anything for clicks it would seem. Although the foul itself might have been a routing flagrant that happens often against Clark, the fact that the team then used to play for a graphic is exactly why it is ridiculous. Next up, we have a direct moment between the rivals, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. It was another moment where a player went for a block, but missed and ended up hitting Clark in the head, knocking her down. At this moment, Clark was able to get around a screen and find a small lane to the basket, where she was met by the sky's Isabel Harrison. As she put a contested layup up, Harrison sent it to the stands, but there was another person behind her, Angel Reese, who also went for the block. However, Reese missed and hit Clark in the head, who fell to the ground in obvious pain. After a replay review, the referees decided that the foul was hard enough to the head in order to grant a flagrant foul. And although the cameras cut to a disappointed Reese who disagreed with the call, there was no questioning whether or not she deserved it. The Fever would end up winning this game as well to punish the Chicago Sky, who were struggling just a little bit to start off the season. Lastly, we have one of the most controversial and one of the most talked about flagrant fouls in recent basketball history. And it has to do with the Chicago Sky as well, who has obviously come up as one of the roughest teams to play against in terms of Caitlin Clark. Kennedy Carter is one of the star players for the Chicago Sky, averaging 17 points per game over this year. But there was a moment this year that the people will probably remember better than any others. In a game against the Fever, she was able to hit a mid-range jumper, and what she did next was awful. For no apparent reason at all, she had a hit out for Caitlin Clark, who was waiting to catch the inbound pass. Right before she could though, Carter body checked her to the ground, and instead of helping her up, walked away as if she had no remorse about it. She seemed to almost embrace it, and she seemed to enjoy being the common enemy. However, there was one more moment that made fans a little angry in this instance, and it once again has to do with Angel Reese, who was taking a rest on the sky bench when the foul occurred. But once Carter hit Clark, Reese could be seen clapping on the bench and almost congratulating Carter for the horrible thing that she had just done to Clark. She seemed to know what she had done was wrong because she refused to be available for the media after the game, which led to a $1,000 fine for herself and a $5,000 fine for her team. But once again, the Fever would go on to win. And at the end of the season, the Fever had also made it to the playoffs, which is something that the Sky themselves could not achieve. Lastly, following the many Chicago Sky incidents, even some former NBA players have spoken out, like former Chicago Bulls star center. After watching Clark assaults, he very bluntly said, if I was the owner of the Indiana Fever, and while something like that could become an issue very quickly, when looking at history, most teams have a player who is willing to get down and dirty like Draymond Green with the Golden State Warriors, or Bill Lambier with the notoriously dirty Detroit Pistons team that ruled the late 80s and early 90s. Caitlin Clark has had a very successful run in the WNBA so far, 
but she's also made a lot of enemies. Even then, the way in which she's handled all these situations has been with class, and she does not let it define her. She just keeps on balling out, and it has led her team to a playoff berth, and it has led many people to realize that she is for real, and that she is here to stay for the better of the sport. Plus, if the WNBA wants to grow, they need to embrace the young stars like Clark, not make them hurt or give them some tough fouls whenever they are up against her. In order for the players to be respected, they need to respect their own, and fans across the league have made that clear. But we will see as the fever enter the playoffs and as the years of Caitlin Clark's dominance play out. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you thought down below in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the episode if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.